Hello there, and thank you for tuning into this screencast. I'm Rex Proctor. In this screencast, we're going to cover off the timeline basics, how to create clips, how to edit clips, how to move around in the timeline using the keyboard. So let's begin by creating a split view in our super tab. I'm going to create a movie collection on top and a timeline on the bottom. Grab my file that I want to use for the movie, drop that in there, and let's close that. And then I link my timeline. Now what you'll notice in the left hand in our home folder is the collection is taken on the name of the first movie that was dragged and dropped in. And then when I linked the timeline, it took on the name of the movie collection. So I haven't had to name anything as long as that original movie is imported with a reasonable name, you can save yourself a lot of typing. So kind of convenient. Now in the timeline, the left and right arrow keys will transport the video. Very easy. The space bar will play the video. So play, pause, play, pause. The up arrow will play and pause the video. If you double tap the up arrow, it will increase the playback speed. Now that sets it. So anywhere I rewind and I go back into play, it will play for instance, at 2x. If I continue to double tap, it will increase the playback speed. And then if I want to go back to one play, one x play, I just press the up arrow. Now, a convenient feature uh, that a lot of people like is the review feature. So wherever the playhead was last paused and you rewind and you tap the down arrow, that will jump back. So basically, you can set a loop point and then loop over that. Where that is kind of cool is if I hold Option and double tap up, that will play at half speed. And so I can loop over something at half speed. So if I zoom in to my movie collection here and I want to see what's going on there, I go, I tap down and now I can see this contest a little bit closer. I want to see that again a little bit closer in and now I can see that I just tap down let it play and that jumps back in so I can see that action over and over so that's the down arrow looping mode all right to create a clip in the timeline manually without using a markup we hold shift control and drag and that will draw a clip in the row by default, the timeline will have one row. If you want to change the name of that, select the row name and travel over to the inspector and give it a name. So I'll call this Rex's Clips. Make that a little wider so we can see it. Now, if you want to add more rows, you can hit the plus button and that will add more rows. Control R is a convenient shortcut to note as well. Now, I want you to take a note of the yellow or white dot here it is called the clip cursor so wherever that is located is where clips will be created or things will be inserted it's a rather important um, little clue in the interface as to where things are going to happen now if I want to copy a clip down to another row I hold option and I click and drag and I can copy that into other rows if I drag to the bottom where there is no more rows, it will create a row. Now each of the clips can have color. So if you see a clip and you want to colorize it, you can select the clip and then change the color. And that may be just because you want to kind of annotate that, make it stand out in the uh, row. The row also can have a default color. So if I go to row three and I set the row color, and then I create a clip in there, it will no longer be gray, but it will be that default row color. When you're hovering over clips, you'll see a hover like this. You'll see this pop-up that comes up. If you want to show and hide that, you double tap control. If you have a really busy timeline, it can be a little bit uh, cumbersome when you're trying to edit and trim clips because this thing is continually popping up. And that's showing you what notes are in there and what qualifiers might be in there, you know, other metadata that you've added to the clip. If you want to trim a clip, hold Shift 
and then click and drag close to the beginning or ending of the clip. Anywhere to the left or right of the midpoint of the clip will grab the beginning or the ending depending on where you click. Very easy. And you'll notice in the pop-up, it shows you the start and end and the duration. There are keyboard shortcuts as well. So if I hold shift and I tap to the left, that will set the clip cursor to the beginning. If I continue to hold down shift, I can use the left and right arrow keys to trim the clip. If I want to jump to the end of the clip, let all the keys up, hold shift, tap right arrow, and that will put me to the end of the clip, and then I continue to hold shift, and I can trim that. So I can get a little bit more accurate, maybe, than I can do with the mouse. The rows also have a background color. So if you want to add that, or show that, I should say, we can turn full row color on, which in this case it doesn't have one, so let's set that. Set it to orange, and you'll see that now that background is now orange. Again, that might be something you just do in order to highlight that section. I'm gonna turn that off. To play a row of clips, double click on the row name and that will engage play. You'll notice that all of the clips will be selected. And you'll see that the playhead, the clip cursor, will jump from clip to clip to clip. If you want to move forward from a clip, just press tab. And you can hold shift and then you can move backward from clip to clip to clip. So that's clip jumping using the tab keys. Now the unique thing here is if I want to watch all of these, when I press play, I select all of those and watch what happens with the clip cursor. It will move from row to row. So I'm just going to go fast forward and you can see that little clip cursor is just going from clip to clip in all of these selected rows. Again, shift tab will take me backward through all those or tab will take me forward. Mm -hmm.